Jupiter is our solar system's largest planet, with twice the mass of all the others combined. Its atmosphere swirls in bands at different latitudes, and its enormous red spot is a continual storm. A new probe that flew above Jupiter's poles revealed a separate world. Hello and welcome to AWZ. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. Ancient Romans saw Jupiter as the king of the gods. In 1610, Galileo used his improved telescope to see Jupiter's moons orbiting the planet, proving that not everything revolved around the Earth as the Church had declared. Though better telescopes improved our view of Jupiter, it wasn't until 1964 that Gary Flandro, a graduate student at JPL, realized there was a way to get a closer look. NASA built twin spacecraft for the planetary grand tour to limit surprises. Two simple spacecraft, Pioneer 10 and 11, were rapidly developed to bring back environmental data. Pioneer 10 was launched toward Jupiter in March 1972. It was the first spacecraft to cross the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Because it was the first probe on a trajectory that would take it out of the solar system, it carried a plaque identifying its origin. By December 1973, Pioneer 10 was sending back clearer pictures of Jupiter than ever before. Gravitational slingshot effect allowed Grand Tour Grand Tour vessels recently renamed Voyager 1 and 2 were to be transported to Cape Canaveral for launch integration when word of Jupiter's hazardous radiation environment came through. This caused complications with more advanced voyagers. Without this last-minute change, electrical pressures of up to 40,000 volts would have been induced in the Voyager's subsystems as it passed. 1977's Jupiter Voyager 2 launched. He may visit Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Voyager 1 left 16 days later and flew over Jupiter, Saturn, and huge moons. At the time, the Voyager spacecraft were the most sophisticated probes to be launched because they were to operate at huge distances from the sun's solar panels could not be used as a power source. They were equipped with radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which used the heat from the decay of plutonium-238 to generate power. As Voyager 1 approached Jupiter in January 1979, it began sending image sequences. That showed a complex and dynamic planet in 1665, Giovanni Cassini described a permanent spot on Jupiter that was regularly observed into the 1700s. It wasn't until the late 1800s that Jupiter's spot was described as red, and it's uncertain whether the historic observations refer to the same feature or phenomenon that regularly manifests in Jupiter's atmosphere. March 1979 was Voyager 1's closest approach. As Voyager approached Jupiter, activities at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory increased. Long peaceful cruises between planets were followed by brief information overloads. The Voyagers transformed our understanding of the Galilean moons, which were previously just dots of light. The inner moon Io is sulfurous yellow and one long exposure revealed an intriguing plume. The gravitational squeeze Io experiences from its gigantic neighbor heats the moon's innards. The plume was a volcanic eruption ejecting material hundreds of kilometers above the surface. Voyager 2 made its closest approach three months after Voyager 1 had gone beyond Jupiter. Europa's brilliantly reflective, smooth surface was the next surprise. Pressure ridges resembled polar ice flows on Earth. Europa is a frozen world with a big ocean behind a thick ice crust like Io. It is heated from within by tidal flexing as Voyager 2 moved towards Saturn. Researchers had a lot of unprocessed Jupiter data. The Voyager missions gave us a basic view of the Jovian system, but they raised more questions than they could answer. It would be more than a decade before Jupiter received another visitor from Earth. Ulysses' creators aimed to orbit over the sun's poles. Jupiter's gravity bent the probe's flight path out of the ecliptic so it could orbit the sun north-south. Not just Ulysses used Jupiter's gravity. Both the Cassini probe to Saturn and the New Horizons probe to Pluto reduced their flight periods by years with Jupiter flybys. Jet Propulsion Laboratory was building a new probe. 
Galileo would be the first spacecraft to orbit Jupiter. Its 4.8-meter antenna was folded like an umbrella until it reached Jupiter. It premiered on Atlantis in 1989. New restrictions controlling shuttle launches required a change in the booster to push Galileo out of Earth orbit. The less powerful solid fuel upper stage now sends Galileo to Venus for a gravity assist. The new flight path took Galileo to a hotter part of the solar system, so the heat-sensitive antenna was kept furled until after the spacecraft looped back past Earth. Galileo made two close passes of Earth, each time gaining speed. The first pass was in December 1990, more than a year after its launch. A year later, when it passed Earth again, the high-gain antenna was only partially open. Long months in storage caused lubricant at the antenna's ribs to dissipate. Researchers would rely on Galileo's smaller antenna with slower data delivery during the trip to Jupiter. Ida is the first known asteroid with a moon. Dactyl was sampled by Galileo in 1995, six months before its closest approach to Jupiter. The probe spent an hour in Jupiter's atmosphere and communicated data to Galileo. Its analysis revealed hardly any water vapor, which was unexpected, and other elements, especially helium, were detected at far lower levels than predicted. The probe experienced extreme heat and cold, suggesting heat is being released from the planet's interior. Slightly more than an hour after transmission from the probe ceased, Galileo began its orbit insertion burn. Its engine had to operate for 49 minutes to put it into a highly elliptical Galileo's initial orbit delivered a close approach to Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon. During this orbit, engineers were trying to understand damage to the spacecraft's vital tape recorder. Without its high-gain antenna, the recorder was essential for slow replay of data recorded during the brief close encounters. It had been stuck in rewind for 15 hours and tape had degraded. Light emitting diodes key elements in the recorder's control system also passed Galileo's orbits were slightly varied so that it could make close approaches to different Jovian moons, but the equatorial orbits needed to reach the moons also took the craft through hot spots in Jupiter's radiation belts. Later analysis of Galileo datasets revealed plasma wave and magnetic field information showing plumes of water vapor erupting from cracks in the surface. Europa has more water than Earth, making it a possible home to life. Io was already known to have volcanic activity, but Galileo saw tides in the moon's solid surface of more than 100 meters. The gravitational distortion of Io makes its volcanoes hotter than anything on Earth. During its eight years at Jupiter, Galileo completed 35 orbits, completing our restricted view of the Jovian system. Radiation stressed Galileo's subsystems, and engineers had to discover workarounds for regular outages. Galileo's instrumentation reported increased noise around Jupiter, and radiation caused current leakages that reset the onboard computer, causing important data loss. Software improvements allowed the computer to recognize these resets and recover by itself. 54321 Ignite and launch of Atlas V Juno's five-year voyage to Jupiter began in August 2011. Its mission parameters would be substantially different from Galileo's. It would ignore the moons and focus entirely on Jupiter. Jupiter's sun is 5% as intense as Earth's, hence the panels are large. The change in power sources was caused by a plutonium-238 shortage. Juno looped around Mars before returning to Earth for a gravitational boost that sent it to Jupiter. Juno approached Jupiter on a path that took it above the planet's north pole. It was destined for a north-south orbit that would take it beneath the planet's radiation belts. For days before its closest approach mission control sent a command that initiated the craft's autopilot. On July 4, 2016 Juno began an engine burn that would insert it into a 53-day orbit. 48 minutes later, JPL received tones confirming that Juno had started its deceleration maneuver. Systems engineers waited 35 minutes for confirmation that Juno had functioned as expected. Scientists and engineers were relieved that Juno's sensors could penetrate Jupiter's dense cloud. 
The polar orbit allows Juno to construct a three-dimensional map of the upper atmosphere, generating a picture of the entire planet as it turns. Researchers were surprised Juno would only make two 53-day orbits before switching to 14-day orbits to speed up sampling. The spacecraft's main engine is fueled by hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, which ignite spontaneously when mixed. The propellant and oxidizer are forced out by a bladder of expanding helium. As Juno was finishing its second orbit, the helium valves were not responding correctly, so the original orbit was maintained. A day after the helium valve malfunction, Juno entered safe mode. All instruments fell offline and data was lost, similar to Galileo, but engineers narrowed the issue to a data transfer failure from one instrument and the spacecraft remains healthy. Jupiter's axis is tilted at only 3 degrees, making even an oblique view of the poles near impossible until Juno arrived. When viewed in the infrared, researchers saw a complex arrangement of storms at both poles. At the North Pole, a central vortex is surrounded by eight anticyclones. At the South Pole, five anticyclones surround the central storm. Scientists don't comprehend why opposing storms don't collide. Juno's microwave radiometer mapped heat distributions down to 350 kilometers on its sixth close approach of Jupiter. The red spot is a massive storm, and Juno saw much higher temperatures at its deepest layers. Unlike on Earth, Jupiter has no geographic boundaries against which storms can disperse. Great Red Spot persists 22 degrees below the equator. It has moved about Jupiter at least 10 times since reliable observations began. Jupiter's magnetosphere traps charged particles in bands reaching immense distances. This affects Juno's sensitive electronics. Jupiter's magnetosphere was thought to be formed by convective movement of an electrically conductive fluid deep within, however Juno studies reveal this is not the case. Jupiter's magnetic field is lumpy, indicating atmospheric origin. By focusing on the gas giant's composition, researchers hope to learn about solar system origin. While geological processes have modified the planet, Jupiter's composition is assumed to be identical to the cloud from which the solar system started. Juno will crash into Jupiter at the end of its mission to avoid contaminating the moons. The next Jovian mission will focus on Europa as the most likely place after Earth to contain life. Like Juno, it will be solar-powered and fly over Europa every two weeks. Early mission plans included for a lander, however this was scrapped since more has to be known about the moon's surface. Europa's ice crust is expected to be at least 19 kilometers thick. If thin spots can be located, future missions may be able to visit the ocean below. Under ice explorers are in development, while other missions will focus on various activities. Jupiter has more than twice the mass of every other planet combined, therefore its gravitational pull affects all other planets' orbits. Jupiter is a mystery. This is all for now. Check out other videos on our channel.